What's up guys, we are in my living room today because today we're going to talk about Fluid, a workstation app that's meant to be used anywhere, especially away from your desk. And we have a special guest, John Dagdalen, the founder and developer of the app, took the time out to sit down and chat with me about their plans and some of the cool things to check out on the app. So let's hop into it. Welcome back to The Construct. Fluid does not need a PC whatsoever. You can see that we have a browser window here. And if I open up another app, you can see we opened up another tab. I can drag that one anywhere I'd like right here. So now we have two windows open. This is just my settings window. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. So you see, we have YouTube open here. It's really, really sharp. I love that they've paid attention to the crispness of the display. It's really good. And then let's just open up something else so that I can show you some of the multitasking. Uh, let's say Xbox. Why not? One of the things that's, you know, become so popular with the Apple Vision Pro is being able to move around, right? So these windows do stay in place. You can see that I can move these over here. And maybe if I wanted to move YouTube up here by the television, I could do that. We can bring Xbox back down here close to us. It's all possible. What's really cool about being able to do things in browsers, guys, is that you can do something as cool as game and watch content just with the power of the built in browsers here in Fluid. So I did ask John about the type of browsers they use here, and this is what he had to say. Yeah, so we actually run a hybrid engine browser. Uh, and the reason we do that is because we use the Chromium that's built into the Quest operating system as the like Chromium part. It's, mm -hmm. it can, it's a little out of date in terms of it hasn't been updated since they first created the Quest OS, which is like Android a couple of versions back. Okay. Um, so in some websites, the, there are JavaScript features that have been released since that time that don't work. And so for those, we use a, a newer Gecko view based uh, like backend. So yeah. right now we're kind of juggling these two and, and choosing based on what site you're on, like which one to use so that the websites work for you. We're hoping that Meta will update this pretty soon. Um, I think it's just something that went under their radar. We've talked to some engineers there. So yeah, hopefully that, that gets updated and we can just go full like newest version of Chromium, maybe. Um, Great. Great. Awesome. Yeah. But it's like it's cool. like a, it's it's kind of like there are other browsers that have been built for Android phones that are similar to ours. Uh, we took like a similar approach to them. And I mean it is a browser, but but it's all this other stuff layered in that makes the browser more useful in VR. Because there is a browser built into Quest, right? But if you actually tried to use it uh, for like getting some work done or doing homework or honestly, even like watching movies and stuff, there are a lot of like things that because the, the Quest browser, I think, has, was built to serve all the different purposes that they thought it would need to do. And it's not, it doesn't like try to be specific on what it's good at, which is like what we're trying to do, which is it's very movable. You can resize it and put it other places. It works really well in mixed reality. Um, and then, so that's just the browser component, but then we have, you know, we, we actually make environments that are designed to help you be more focused and productive, or at least like be able to, to enjoy the like experience of seeing that content more. So I think like we are more than a browser. So if that's was, was what you were thinking that like you saw and it's, oh, it's just a browser, give it a try and like try to try to use these other parts with it and see how like it elevates it from being just a browser to something new. Like that's our goal. So I just want to show you some of the versatility here because we now live in the future. We have Xbox gaming via the cloud that we can do right here on the headset. Now ahead of time, this controller is already paired to this headset. I'm going to turn off this pointer. This is actually a cool feature. If you double tap, you can turn that pointer off. So now I'm not swiping up on windows when I'm moving my hand around and it says here, hands disabled. You can double tap again. Not like that. You can double tap again and bring that back. So now I can point again. So one thing I'll point out here is that I can't actually touch these screens. That's not a thing. These are just viewable. You can use your hand or your mouse. The mouse works just as easily. Actually, sometimes it's a little bit easier to use the mouse to kind of move these things around. You can see how fast I can move it there. One thing that's kind of cool about this is that if I click a window, and then scroll the wheel, I can actually push the window back and pull it up. So there's some precision maneuverability of the windows here. It's really great. I highly 
would like I implore everybody try using fluid with a keyboard and mouse or at least the Bluetooth keyboard because that's what we designed it to be used with not like it supports hands and controllers but the experience is like 10 times better if you use a keyboard and mouse especially then if you link up with a password manager uh so they're like you can use Bitwarden or LastPass's website we have one built into the app called the fluid password manager that lets you um you can just import all your passwords from Chrome or something into it and then nice. that experience, like, it's just so much better than than what you can get in other types of things that look like browsers on Quest. Um, so, yeah, those are those would be like what I would love for people to do. There is a slight input lag, and that just comes with Xbox Cloud Gaming. It has nothing to do with Fluid particularly, but I'm playing a relaxing game here, so maybe precision timing might not be as important. Now, if anybody's played Ori before, you know that could become an issue depending on where you are in the game. So everything works. So I tap A, start the game. I think I'd started one earlier. Just go to continue. So you can see we're actually doing multitasking, something you can't do in the stock app. So I have a giant screen playing Xbox over here and I cannot make this jump at all let's just go down so I have, I have a big screen over here game over there playing both at the same time now i am getting some frame frame drops and things like that but i do not mind that whatsoever for an app lab app guys this is free and i'm playing both xbox cloud service and watching something at the same time this is awesome Okay, before I, so I'm gonna get carried away playing Ori. Let, let's get out of there. <laughs> so what about spatial computing? I actually talked about this app early on in the channel when comparing it to the Apple Vision Pro. So you can work inside this app too, but I wanna show you something inside the environment. So if I'm inside of an immersive environment, they have this little, let me unlock that. They have this little window where I can see my desk. And one thing that I want to point out here is that there's no setup here. It's just a window. A lot of the other apps, including Horizon Workspaces, ask for you to like set up like a, a window and draw it out. Even Immersive does that. This is just ready to go as soon as you start the app and it's completely movable. I can put it wherever I want to show what I might need to grab quickly. And then if you don't want to deal with that, you can just turn it off, right? So it's really cool. I'm really glad to hear you notice that because that's like a core design feature that we have or a core mm -hmm. design principle is we want like as little friction to put someone putting on the headset and like being in it and doing stuff and getting value. Yeah. All the uh, like in my experience, I tried all these apps for doing work in the headset and, you know, this kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I was just really frustrated with like how much friction you had to put, put something in and sign into something on the headset, but then maybe you had to take it off to like sign up with your phone in order to get it to work. <laughs> right, right. It's just like, and then you had to have an app and install it onto your computer. And then you had to, it was just like yeah. 17 yeah, steps gonna... to just do something, right? <laughs> exactly. So our, our, our core principle is headset on, you're in it, that's it. And if you need to like enter a room code to enter a multiplayer session, then that's like one, one thing you type in and hit go. And so we're trying to like strip away all the friction that exists in VR right now. One thing that I've seen in the comments when I covered some of the other apps that require a local network and an app running on your laptop or desktop is, is it good for travel? But those really aren't good for travel because you do need a PC or something to connect to. With this, and I am tethered to my phone for internet connection, I'm actually right now in my car. So let's open up a window and then we can we can open up an app here. Let's open up uh, YouTube. So if you are traveling, not having the requirement of having a laptop or something, so nothing's on my lap right now, I'm completely connected and I'm able to use giant screens or more than one screen. Open up another one. This works completely fine. I'm watching YouTube videos. I can pull up something else over here pull up Xbox and again you know I'm on like LTE or something right now so the connection's not great but if you have to do some light work especially if you were inside some Google Docs 
You could do those with full screens. Let's open up one more window. Open up Apple TV. Now I didn't bring my keyboard, but you can see the virtual keyboard is here. I would imagine if I was traveling, let's hit a window right outside the car window there. And there you go. Three screens inside the car. Environments that we have right now uh, are kind of a mix of like free models that have been like released on um, like Sketchfab and stuff. We do have a, an in-house designer who has been building from scratch like environments. Those haven't been released yet, but they're they're coming soon. I can actually send you a few pictures. Right. Uh, yeah, but we yeah, have one that uh, is kind of like this big house with big glass windows all around and uh, multiple levels so that you have like an upstairs meeting area, kind of a lounge seating area. And then uh, there might be some like Easter egg secrets in there too that people might discover. Yeah, cool. Um, cool. And then uh, we have also a room that we're calling Lo-Fi. Uh, so Orson Rosetto is one of the, the members of our team. He, uh, mm -hmm. he started from like the Lo-Fi Girl YouTube stream uh, picture. Yeah. And he actually yeah. went to the artists and said, Hey, like, can we just make the room that this, the rest of the room that you would see around mm -hmm. this picture. And so yeah. there's basically an environment styled on that, that we're about to launch too. That one's really colorful and very playful. So it's, it's pretty fun. And because you're watching this video, we are opening up the new environment that John just mentioned to you. So if you download Fluid, go to your settings, scroll down to the bottom and add cheat code beats all lowercase, you'll get access to the new lo-fi environment. So those are our first kind of like hand built. The other environments we had were sort of like hand modified. So we would change the materials or add stuff or remove stuff based on what we needed, like cabin, which okay. is the default. That one yeah. had like a front on it. And then we removed that so that you could actually see out. Uh, see yeah. Easier. Yeah. I, yeah. I like that. Uh, I like that. Look. Yeah. Cool. And in terms awesome, of letting man. users um, modify these right now, you can change the skybox. So we have a feature where you can generate your own view outside like mm -hmm. that, that you're overlooking. Um, that will work in cabin and then uh, also lo-fi and then the, the house, uh, the house, like big glass, uh, works really well for that. And we okay. actually have a, a, a and we, we call out to, to an API that allows you to write your own prompt and then click generate. And it'll like create one unique for what you asked it to make. And then you can okay. save those. We have slots for saving them. So you can switch between them. So if you have one that you like for watching movies, it's darker or one that's, right. you know, maybe in the morning you put it on, it's a little bit brighter and kind of wakes you up, uh, gets you in the mood to work. Yeah. I like it. Um, and we, we do want to make it so that people can can make their own spaces probably these are kind of undecided features that we're still discussing internally about like where, what direction we want to go in but sure. it seems like that might be something we want is to enable people to have a space they can customize for themselves um what i keep hearing from people is that comfort is an issue right um you know, I, I don't want to work on this because the things on my head you know it's yeah. too bright or whatever i know you just mentioned darker environments but are you guys thinking about that or, or either working with some hardware manufacturers on accessories, things like that? Yeah, actually, here, give me a second. Let me grab one. Um, uh, we we thought when we got the Quest 3 and we were really excited because we had used the Quest Pro and we thought it was pretty comfortable for us. This uh, like moving the pressure to your forehead and the back of your head. So kind of like a crown. Um, mm -hmm. It seems to help for some people. That's a way better setup. Uh, so when we got the Quest 3s in, we were like, we put them on. And we're like, oh no, these are pretty uncomfortable. Like you have to strap it to your face and when you take it off, you've got the red ring of, of yeah. shame. And and so we're like, I really wish that they just made a Quest Pro with the Quest 3's guts. And then right. we're like, wait, right. we can solve this. We're engineers. So like we, we've started like hacking our Quest 3's um, and then making all of these open source. So like this is just a stock Quest Elite strap style strap. Um, yeah. You can get these on eBay for like 30 bucks, 40 bucks. And then we designed a... Uh, like an interface that slides into oh, the headset and like you just kind of slide it in like this Very and cool. uh it goes on your forehead and so it moves all the pressure off of your cheeks and and uh, like brow into your forehead and nice. Um, nice. we released this open source like free uh that you know anybody can download these 3d print files and make it 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 uses the quest pro like head pad so that we thought the Quest Pro's head pad was really well designed for like a variety of people's head shapes and stuff like that. So we yeah. wanted to not reinvent the wheel there. And you can buy these these head pads on on um, Amazon for like ten bucks or something. Um, cool. And so if you combine these things together, 
basically this headset is comfortable enough to wear for a few hours at a time without any discomfort and you can wear it for like even longer if you're kind of used to it so I, yeah. I find myself regularly working until my headset dies uh, even when it's like plugged into my laptop um so like it's slowly draining uh, okay. so like that's like four hours maybe yeah, that's cool and, here. and for yeah. people that don't have a 3d printer they were like hey, hey how can we get this so we partnered with somebody on etsy who like sells 3d printed parts requests and so oh, cool. we don't make any money on these like we want to proliferate these things as far as possible anybody can get them or we want anybody to be able to get them so that they can have a comfortable like long-term use experience and quest yeah. um and so yeah if you go to shop.fluid.so that'll take you to his page where he, he prints these for us and uh, sends them out. Um, and then if, and if you want to print it yourself, the link is in the description of that product that you can go find it on Thingiverse. So if you decide to download Fluid and give it a shot and see if you can actually work in it, join the Discord because they're really listening to how users are reacting to the app. It was really great talking to John, super nice guy. And I tell you what, go down to the comments and type got it. If you got the code today for the special environment, lo-fi, and I'll see you next time here in the construct. Peace.